I'm primarily going to be talking about health and fitness. So if you're new to the whole health fitness type of field, 2020, you're starting your new journey, I hope this video can help you out because self-discipline is what's gonna keep you going long-term, baby, okay? Not short-term, we're talking making lifestyle changes, mental shift changes to get that train going. You want it to last you a long time. If you're not already, definitely hit that subscribe button for new videos every single week. Okay, let's do this. These are 10 I've come up with in no particular order. So number one, we're talking about changing your perspective. I can't versus I don't. So an example would be, say you're at a friend's house and they offer you cake or pastries or something like that. Instead of just saying, I can't eat that. Try saying, oh, I don't eat that, but thank you. When you word things differently, you're actually telling yourself and giving yourself credit for believing in not eating that particular food item. When saying things like, I can't eat that, it's actually telling yourself, I can't, I'm punishing myself. I'm not allowed to. That's not true here, okay? You're making the conscious decision to better your life, so I don't eat that. By saying I don't, you're owning that decision, okay? You're confident in that decision, and you know yourself. You know what you're doing. Be confident in this. This is your journey and your life, so you don't eat these things. Not I can't, because this ain't a punishment, girl. No. Number two is to remove anything and everything that does not align with your goals. This could be relating to a lot of things. I'm gonna give you an example of food, okay? Eliminating sweets out of the house. For example, James and I, we don't buy anything that doesn't fit our health goals. By not bringing things into your life that would negatively impact your goals, it just sets you up for more of a success and gets you used to not being around that and not eating things like that. Now, this could go for anything like I said, alcohol, cigarettes, you name it. It's just about not having those things around you to negatively influence your life. So understand what your goals are and don't allow anything to interfere with that. Don't even allow it into your house, girl. Okay. So number three is focusing on building the new not on trying to fix the old, okay? This is important because a lot of people are so used to how their lifestyle was or currently is. When trying to make that transition, they dwell too much on the past, but what a lot of people don't understand is that your past really has no influence whatsoever on your future. You're starting on a new slate, you need to have that perspective of it being that new, fresh slate, okay? Do not compare to your past. Don't compare to things you used to do. Give yourself the chance to start over. Any mistakes you may have made, anything that you're kind of disappointed in yourself in, forgive yourself and move on. You need that closure, it's healthy. If you resent yourself for anything that you've done in the past, it's only anchoring your future, okay? It's only keeping you in the past, and that's what you wanna do is move past the past and just look towards the future. You're building yourself new, fresh. Keep that perspective and you will be just fine. Okay, so number four is to shift from motivation to habit. Two totally different things, okay? Motivation is a very temporary fix. It's a wonderful thing. It can get your bum right up and going, but it does not last forever. So the purpose of this video is to try to train yourself to have more long-term mindset and to get yourself where you want permanently, okay? It's all about lifestyle change. So for example, you watch a gym video of somebody working out. You start to get that energy from them. You get that motivation. You go, oh, I wanna look like this person or I want, I have similar goals in mind. I'm gonna go work out and do that today. That's wonderful, but that's not enough to keep you permanently going at it. You need something more than just like a visual stimulant, okay? It's all up in here, girl. But when trying to make that transition from motivation to habit, the trick is to focus only on you your own goals, your body, your mind, your life. It's great to have that external motivation, but what's gonna keep it a habit, a lifestyle change permanent is inside of you. It has nothing to do with external anything. So with that being said, it does take about 21 days for a practice to become a habit. So 
obviously practice. This is not something that's gonna happen overnight and all of a sudden you're just gonna be you know, fine and dandy and have this habit that's just wonderful and life-changing. It takes some serious practice and time to get to that point. So, nevertheless, it will always be worth it. You just gotta invest in yourself. Okay. Number five is probably my favorite one, okay? I'm gonna be real with you, girl. This is something I swear by. I'm very, very strict about, I guess you could say. It's switching your mindset from an emotional to a very logical mindset. So for example, somebody puts a piece of chocolate cake in front of you. Your first reaction will be emotional. It will be, oh my God, that looks good. Oh my God, I'm salivating. I'm picturing how good that must taste. That's all emotional. You're just going based off of your initial emotion. What's gonna get you past that binge, that whole giving in to those kinds of things is gonna be your logical taking over. That's what you gotta train your brain to do, is think logically, which means looking at that piece of cake and saying, okay, well that does look good, but how will it make me feel? What will it do to my body? What negative effects will it have? And how will it deter me from completing my goals and getting to where I wanna get? So it's very healthy to differentiate the two, emotional and logical, and to understand when that logic needs to take over. That is self-discipline in a nutshell. When thinking logically, for example, the cake, you're going to be understanding that you're eating for function and not taste. You gotta be really upfront and honest with yourself in these scenarios, okay? Recognize that emotional and recognize that you need to switch right over to that logic because the logic is what's gonna get you where you need to go in life. Relying on that emotion, you're just gonna be, mm, no. So guys, this leads me to point number six. By saying no to that piece of cake, it is not deprivation. So do not get it twisted. Do not think you're depriving yourself. If you think that in your head that you are depriving yourself, you are going to end up giving in almost every single time because there will not be any end in sight. So you're not depriving yourself, believe me. Dep deprivation is only when you're not eating at all. That's starving yourself. That's depriving your body. So if anything, you're actually depriving yourself by eating the cake because you're depriving yourself from nutrients that you could be getting in better foods. So number seven is to challenge yourself throughout the week, intensely. So adding in intense challenges, whether it be nutritional or exercise. So for example, eating super clean a couple days out of the week, like super strictly, or exercising intensely those few days. This is what's gonna help mix up your routine enough to keep it from becoming monotonous and boring. Whether we like to admit it or not, humans are designed for challenge. We actually thrive on challenge. Keeping that incorporated into your routine will not only help you continue going in that direction, and it's going to make your everyday routine seem a lot easier, okay? When starting any routine, you might think it's intense, especially if you're not used to it. But adding in these super intense days, these high, high intensity days, will make the rest of your week, your normal, healthy maintenance, not seem like such a burden, in other words. You will kind of adapt to it a lot. Better. What used to be a heavy duty challenge to you will become your new norm, okay? It's gonna gradually go like a chart, like you're eventually going to get to that level where something that used to be so difficult is now your norm. Okay, so tip number eight is to not call it a diet. No such thing. I mean, there is, but it's just like quick fixes that never last. So instead of calling it a diet just simply call it your nutritional standards that's what i refer to it as a diet is something that has an end line okay that eventually will come to an end you don't want that you want this to be an ongoing permanent lifestyle change i know that people overuse that term diet and it's almost like the norm it's just what we as a culture have evolved into just constantly saying but don't be afraid to just stand outside of that outside of the average, the norm, it's okay, you should be proud of being able to say this. You diet when there's events coming up, okay? You diet for a wedding or a vacation, you know, just temporary little fixes. But what happens when those days are over? 
nutritional standards are a guideline, a permanent guideline that you must meet every single day in your life. That's what makes it a standard, okay? Keeping that standard in mind as something that defines you in your lifestyle is what's gonna keep you believing in it and it's what's gonna keep you from falling off, okay? This is, this is all about permanent. Okay, number nine is to think long-term versus short-term. So do not get it twisted. You should be thinking both, okay? You should have short-term goals, absolutely, because that's what's going to help you right here, right now, every day to slowly get to those long-term goals. Long-term meaning things like how you see yourself as you age, all right? Thinking long-term in that sense not thinking about how long it's gonna take you to drop X amount of weight. Get that out of your head, don't think like that, all right? That's gonna discourage you. Think long-term as in five, 10 years from now, I will potentially be seeing doctors less, I will be feeling 10 times better, things like that. Yeah, that's a long-term investing idea. But having long-term just by itself isn't good either, because like I said before, it can get very discouraging. You have to have your short-term goals, view long-term as like a ladder and short-term being as the rungs in the ladder. You can't have one without the other. So for me, long-term would be things like not having to go see a doctor when I'm middle to late age, okay? Avoiding doctors, that's my long-term goal. But short-term goal for me would be like eating clean, going to the gym and exercising every single day. These are short-term goals that inevitably turn into long-term, so gotta have both. Okay, last but not least, number 10 is just so freaking straightforward right here, right now, but this is how I'm gonna wrap it up. Giving yourself time. Patience is a virtue. We all know that. You gotta give yourself the much needed, respectful time. Things take time, great things especially. So, investing in yourself isn't a one and done, it is a long term, time invested thing. So once you learn pretty much how to change and shift your mindset, change your perspective on health, fitness, wellness, that is the beginning of changing your entire life. And the only thing that's gonna allow you to do that is ties. Those were my 10 tips on how to become self-disciplined. You wanna chase that healthy lifestyle, it needs to be the stamp on the envelope. You need to Put that stamp, you need to get self-disciplined. There's just no other way around it. Understand that it is not easy to become self-disciplined, okay? But if there's a will, there's a way. Remember that the body will not go where the mind does not allow it to go. Perspective and mental shifts are necessary. I know guys, 